Hello everyone and welcome to the Big Bang. In a previous video we had found what the transfer function of the circuit is. We had also concluded that this was a transfer function of a high pass filter. But why? Let's start by breaking this transfer function down. We're going to do that by first finding the poles and the zeros of this function. We can get the zeros from setting the numerator equal to zero and we can get the poles from setting the denominator equal to zero. Let's start with the zeros. So we can set j omega l over r equal to zero, and that gives us the zero rather quickly. We figure out that j omega equal to zero is where we're going to have one of our zeros. Well, the only zero. Then we can get the pole by setting one plus j omega l over r equals to zero. And from solving that, we get that the pole will be negative r over l. So that's when the pole is happening. All right, now that we have the zeros and the poles, we can actually plot them on a imaginary real axis. And I'm doing this for one quick note, but this isn't that important right now. I just want you to keep in mind that our pole is negative. So it would be here, right? The negative r over l. And it's also real. So because our pole is negative, so it's on this left-hand side of the um, plot here, this means that we have a stable system. But more on that later when you take a control systems class. What we can do now, though, is find the cutoff frequency. All right. If we look back at the transfer function, we see that it is written in a standard format with 1 plus j omega something in the denominator. And this is perfect. It gives us the cutoff frequency rather easily. We can call the something multiplying the j omega tau. So do you see the j omega here? And we have the L over R multiplying the j omega. We're going to call this tau. And the cutoff frequency is actually 1 over tau. So the cutoff frequency will be r over l radians per second. So this is going to be our cutoff frequency. OK, now that we have the cutoff frequency, we can go ahead and start drawing our Bode plots. OK, so keep in mind that whenever you're asked to draw a Bode plot, you're going to have to draw two plots. One of them, which I'm going to draw right here, it's going to be your magnitude frequency plot. And the second one, which I want to draw right here, is going to be your phase shift frequency plot. So your magnitude is going to be quite often actually just called h of j omega and you're going to be finding that in decibels whereas your phase shift you can draw this and you're going to be finding that in um, degrees and then the frequency will be usually in omega and you're going to be finding that in radians per second. OK, so let's start drawing. First, we can put our cutoff frequency on the plot. And I'm going to put it right here. It's really, it's really arbitrary just for the sake of explaining. OK, well, we also have a 0, though, right at 0, right? I'm just going to show it right here. So for the magnitude frequency plot, we're going to get a zero right at the beginning, right? Now, when we get a zero in the magnitude plot, we're going to have a positive slope of 20 decibels per decade. So it's going to do something like this. So this will be 
20 decibels per decade. That's whenever you get a zero, you're going to have this increase in the slope by 20 decibels per decade. But then you're going to hit this pole. The pole will actually make you decrease your slope by 20 decibels per decade. So if you were at 20 and you're decreasing by 20, you go back to zero. So now you're going to have this happening because the pole hit. All right, now we can draw the phase shift plot. And what's going to happen is we first have the zero. What the zero does, though, is it will shift your face 90 degrees, so a positive 90 degrees. So you're going to start right from here at 90, so right at positive 90 degrees. And that's going to be your phase shift. And then when you hit the pole, the pole will decrease that phase shift by 90 degrees. So if you were at 90 degrees minus 90, now you're going to be all the way down to zero. So you're going to fall all the way down to zero, and now this is where you're going to be at zero degrees. Okay, so notice that I drew these plots really sharply. I am doing this to show you what the changes are, but in reality, what ends up happening is what I'm going to draw now in red. You have really smooth curves, so you'd have a smooth transition. So if you were to draw this, let's say on MATLAB, you would put the function in MATLAB and you would spit it out, you would get something really smooth. I can shape it up like this, a really smooth curve. Same thing would happen with the phase shift, you would get something like this. So you get very smooth curves in reality. Now just to keep in mind, I'm going to write down here, when you get a zero, you get a positive 20 decibel per decade change in the slope. When you get a pole, you get a negative 20 decibel per decade change in the slope. For the phase shift, when you have a zero, you get a positive 90 degree change. When you get a pole, you get a negative 90 degree change. Just keep this in mind. Now, let's go back to the question I asked in the very beginning. Remember that we had talked about how this is the Bode plot for a high pass filter? Why was that, right? You may be wondering that. So. Notice how here in the magnitude frequency plot, we have the frequencies, um, the magnitude is highest over here, right? At the higher frequencies. Whereas in the lower frequencies, let's say right here, you have the magnitude quite small. It's increasing as you get to higher frequencies. So what's happening is that lower frequencies are being attenuated or filtered whereas the higher frequencies are quite literally passing. So this is the reason why we would consider this to be the Bode plot of a high pass filter. And they're rather easily, rather easily recognizable because of this characteristic. You see the higher frequencies passing, the lower frequencies are not passing. Okay guys, so this is it for now and I will see you next time.